Actual six inches. Be presentable. My six inches? <laughs> no, but it's it's good. It it's something I'm trying to care more about. Closer. Trying to be more presentable. Trying to care across the board. Yeah, this is gonna be a constant thing for us now. It's gonna be so in the middle of conversation, if someone's getting further away, you're just gonna hear closer. <laughs> Which Mike's pretty far away. That's not six inches. Is it not? Nope, that's about eight. You're right. This looks like it was. Whose tape measure are you using? Your wife's tape measure or the actual contractor's? Stanley's. Stanley's. I'm using Stanley's. The Stanley tape measure. The proper tape measure. That's why Mike has like 12 of them. I uh, he's got 12 of them dude, because they're no, cheap. No, I got, no. You can no, get those no. at Walmart. Before you even go into the story, because it's seriously, I just pictured it. I come in, I see three large 30-foot <laughs> Stanleys, and then you have two little micro 12-foot ones. I was like, he went to the store. Yep, he went to the store because they're all just there. And what do I do first time I get here? Tower. Let's just build a fucking tower on them. <laughs> and I know you looked at it when you took one oh, off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> But it was it's it it so was the one of those real things, story of what happened. It was one of those things because I was I was building this this table, our wonderful new podcasting table. But oh, by the way, hey, this is name pending. This is name pending. I'm Mike Culberson. I'm still keeper. We got and, cool name placards. Well, two of us. Do. We we do. And I'm Kelt. We'll we'll get him a sharpie one. Yeah, that's we'll, cool. I mean, cardboard. Make that. I don't need cardboard. anything special. You know that. So back to my story about <laughs> tape measures. Um. <laughs> So I'm I'm building this table and I keep I've got the shitty piece of shit tape like the itty bitty ones. I've got the orange one that I acquired from somewhere and I hate the way that they do measurements on that one because they're itty bitty and they're too incremental or something. I I don't know, I just hate it. And I only had one metal Stanley one and I couldn't fi- I know I have more somewhere somewhere and I couldn't find them. And so I rolled through Home Depot and I was like Buy, buy, buy. Buy three more. Yes, that's what you do. Because they're, what, 15 bucks a piece or some shit? Maybe. But we're already getting off track. Book talk. Book talk! So, I finished a book, Wisdom of the Bullfrog. It's a 34-year seal, and he talks about leadership principles across the whole military. Like... Who's it by? It's by... Let me look it up real quick. I have it on my audible... But essentially, this book is, so it was number one bestseller. It's Admiral William H. McRaven, U.S. Navy retired. And it's the wisdom of the bullfrog, leadership made simple but not easy. So he talks about all these concepts that the Rangers use, Recon uses, the Berets, like across the board. He talks about all of them. And one of them really, really stuck out to me. Ironically enough, it was a 15-foot table. He was like, are you prepared to go to the green table? And this is something I grew up with my dad hearing all the time. Because at the end of any mission, anything you had to do, any tasker, you had to go and meet with this group of individuals at a, at a green table and explain why you did it the way you did. And it's definitely more a self-development book, but some of the stuff he brings in, he puts it in a way that definitely intrigues you further and is like "Mm, maybe i've been doing leadership wrong maybe i've been following wrong maybe and it start it 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 gets you thinking it was one of those it's a quick read i mean i think it's like an eight hour book so i think it's like five and a half hours if you read at two times speed but definitely a good book but that was that was my book read for the week yeah a single day book read the other one was uh, Jeremy Riddle, The Reset, talking about how worship has been, I don't know, pretty much put on a <clears throat> band pedestal, and it's no longer worship. What do you mean a band pedestal? So it's like every other band. It, worship has become like ACDC or like Metallica. Oh, so so it's become it's become pop. Exactly. It's, it's become something that it was never meant to be. It's and, become a a, a money making business. Well, that's that's and the it thing. has been since the nineties when with Michael W. 80s. Smith. It started in the eighties. So in the, it it started before that, but eighties is when Not secular companies out, started buying that comes to mind. worship bands. 
Yeah. So when something secular, something worldly, not inside the religion, not inside the faith, buys it, all they care about is money, which is business. Everybody can understand that. So they just have to push out numbers, push out things, and it it took away from what was supposed to be religious worship. Time out. We might have an intruder. They confused. Oh, don't hit each other. Uh, they must be doing a country yeah. talk. But yeah, this this book really talks about how worship has gone off the tracks and is pop now, and it's no longer well what it was meant to be. We've had this conversation before. We have, and be- I because I read a book about it, and I I have had it, it's one of the reasons why I am not a fan of and i go out of my way to not listen to most christian music is because what end up i don't end up thinking about god yeah. i end up thinking about these people are using god to make money and yeah. that's all i can think about and maybe that's not the right way maybe that's something fucked up in my head because maybe the message is fine but the people are the problem but it doesn't change how i feel about it well and and most of them out there and Jeremy Riddle even talks about in in the reset. They've been doing it this way for so long that they were trained that this is the way, and they don't know because they're not investing time in their faith. They're not investing time in spending time with God. So both books, both self development. I don't do worship at all. Most worship I don't like because a lot of it doesn't feel real, mm-hmm. and that's that's just me. But I'd, those, like, to but, chime, but, I'd like to chime in on it. Go ahead. So. It, you know, I was talking to somebody actually earlier today about this, or was it? Yeah, it was earlier today. And um, in the music industry, it's keeping up with the Joneses, right? So it's who, who, how do you market to the next generation? And and you're looking at millennials and and Gen, Gen Zers, Z. right, right now, and even alphas that are well, coming I'm up. I'm millennial. Yeah, well, you're not marketing to millennials anymore because. I mean, you know what millennials like to listen to, um, and and you just keep making records. I mean, Metallica is is the first thrasher type music to actually go mainstream from the '80s, and they're still playing and making records, right? They have good. They had made good business sense and changed the way they make music or the, the they, sound they... of the music to accommodate listening ears right for one album for one album and and then you take uh is not uh what's her name she was country now she's pop taylor swift taylor swift 90 percent of who buys her albums are women right and but she made a good business move switching to pop still making money business move was becoming her own owner Yes. Yes. Real, not, realistically, yeah. no longer in debt or having to deal with it. She became her own. Not not letting right. her parents drive her career. Yep. Which and I I get why she has a hard time with her relationship with you know the fave. But and, I I still give her props and her parents props because they may have she was good. She was yeah. really good. Mm-hmm. And they put her foot in the door. Everything else that happened, that's personal between her and her family. Right. But they got her foot in the door. Right. But to get back on the topic of the worship, millennials and Gen Zers right now are wanting to listen to to rap and hip hop, which is mostly just babble. It's well, just, which is now blah, just blah, 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 blah. It, Well, yeah. You know, hip hop is no longer unless you hit the non mainstream artists, yeah. which they're they're still out there. I listen to I mean, a there's few. a lot of Christian good Christian rap that's out there like Thistle or Lecrae or you know whatever but um the worship I like it, it's it's all about hits you hard like it actually yeah. you can tell it's soldier like there's Pastor Mike Jr <clears throat> like during his songs he actually prophesies he says this will happen well that's why like a lot of the the old school bluegrass yep. is what I really get down on because when they're talking about God I truly feel like when they're talking, talking about, about anything, though. It's not just God. They're talking about their struggle. Yes. And when they do bring God into it, you're like, I feel you right now. Like, mm. I'm, and I'm, and I'm there. 
I'm invested now. It's not just, oh, yeet, yeet, trunk, something, right. gat, shoot, drugs. Like, it just... Or if we're going to take it to the country, oh, <laughs> I I drive my tractor <laughs> and I got my dog. Beer, dog, girlfriend, truck. Train. Church. Train. Whiskey. And it's like, this man Speaking has... Speaking of which, jerky. Jerky? <laughs> This man has never seen a tractor. <laughs> I saw one earlier today driving on my street, and I was like, what the hell are you doing? On my <laughs> I mean, in the middle of the city. There is a business model that needs to go into everything to make it profitable. There is. Now, the level of what you go into business model could potentially negate what you're doing. Like, look, we're going to stay real. This is what we're going to do. We're going to be real, period. You don't like it? Don't sponsor us. Don't invest in us. Don't. And that's that's where some people go. And some right. of them make it big. Some don't. Yeah. Then the others are go so far business that I no longer have a backbone because I'm so invested in money versus what we started this as. Mm-hmm. But that was that was my book talks <laughs> on my side because Jeremy Riddle the reset was really good and it definitely gave me perspective. Same with Wisdom of the Bullfrog. Both leadership and then worship wise, it gave me a different understanding. Go. So now I can pick out what's the good and the bad for me, at least. Have you heard of Brother Lawrence? Possibly. He's a monk that was his job in in is it a monastery? Monasteries. Mm-hmm. His job was to be a cook. But in everything he did, he practiced the presence of God. Like he could, in everything he did, he could feel God in it. And and the fact that what he was doing was to glorify God. It's only an hour listen at regular speed. <laughs> it was perfect minutes, for me. Right. But send it it's, to me. It's, it's really good. Send it um, to me. I'll, I'll definitely listen to it. You and it, it's just about a bunch of stories that he tells about. Where he could feel the presence of God and in different situations and stuff like that. Another one that I downloaded, um, because I'm learning to listen more than speak, <laughs> uh, is a no. book by Adam McHugh. Adam McHugh. Wow, this book talk's got to be lit. Uh, the Listening Life. I haven't started listening. We haven't even got to Mike yet, and we know <laughs> he reads like he does laundry. <laughs> But I just wanted to put that out there, so I'm going to have more information on that next time. Heck yeah. No, yeah, no, I'm on board. I it, love that you're reading. I don't I'm, care I'm, if it's an hour. I don't give a shit what it is, as long as you are ingesting new information through a medium besides video, digital, blah, It gives blah, you blah. value. Well, I mean, obviously it's digital, but besides but it, but it gives you value. YouTube or mm-hmm. TV, yeah. right? Oh, and on top of that, I've been reading the Bible legitimately every day. That's awesome. <laughs> Which is pretty dope. I can get behind that. Yep, definitely. All right, now let's get into uh, Mike's giant book talk. I heard something about Chinese colonization. Colonization. So (laughs) there's a a genre known as um, Chinese fantasy cultivation. Cultivation. Right. Mm. Right. Um, So (laughs) pretty big difference. (laughs) Cultivating the internal energies, right? And so one of my favorite authors took this Took took a altar and book name. Took an Eastern concept and did his own series on it. Okay. All right. And the series. Hold on, I'll get there. Hold As he on. pulls it up, since we can have phones again. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm <laughs> I so that. glad. I'm so glad. <laughs> all this time, all these episodes later, and I'm still happy. I'm so happy. Um. <laughs> it is it is uh the cradle series by Will White. Okay, cradle series Will so White. So the book is called the Cradle Series? The well, well, the I mean, books it's, are named It's 12 books, right? But the series mm-hmm. is called the Cradle Series. And the first book is, is un- what you're on? The first book is called Unsold. So what I've, what I've, book are you at now? I've cycled through this series a lot. <laughs> and I think I'm on like book 9 again. Oh, and I started sure. like a couple days ago listening on the, I needed another, I needed something to listen to on the drive. 
And so I was like, oh, man, yeah, I'll listen to this. Somebody gets to his house and listens for two hours while his truck is still on. No, that's how, I, I, I fucking get inside and I, like, start doing chores and I'm still listening to it. And I'm like, yeah. Um, but how it starts is you're following a character called Linda. Um, way like she, way, way she Linden. Way she Linden. Okay. Right. And you know, Eastern, the last yeah. name goes before the, the personal name. Right. Um, and so his name is Linden and, you know, it starts off in his childhood and there's this test that they do to see what kind of, you know, cultivation path occupation in a way yeah that they're going to which is how they they for cultivation implies you know fomenting your <clears throat> internal energies and power right um and what path he would take and you know you put your hand in this water but it's not water it's called madra right which is the the physical or what the energy is called okay so this is all literally about energy energy yes okay yeah and so he puts it, it like it's a different, like chi. It, yeah, it's like a different form of magic, right? So instead of calling it mana, we're calling it madra, right? Mm. Um, so he puts his hand in this bowl of water, and it's supposed to freeze, stick to your fingers, it's supposed do, to do something, do something, and instead, it does everything. Nothing happens. But everyone else normally has something. Everyone, happens. every other child has something to happen, and he's like six. Or something, right? So he's a readily marked. And something. he immediately, like, it, it immediately turns. And the elder in charge of the test immediately starts treating him like shit. And he goes, you don't deserve to be, you know, considered part of the family or whatever. And, you know, um, you know, you're, you're an unsoul is what they called him. You have no soul. So this happens every once in a while. I mean, where they, someone they had to dig into, they had to, like. Like this is something that someone has to really know about, right? It's it's like an extreme rarity. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's he's growing up, we get into like his teenage years, he's like sixteen or fifteen or sixteen, and he's and he's struggling. normal, essentially, is what everybody's saying. Yeah, he's struggling through life. Everyone else can do cool magic shit. He's not allowed to do anything, right? He can work in the scripture li- library. <laughs> And stuff like this. And eventually, you know, he he hits a frustration point and one of his elders takes pity on him and says, okay, well, go feed Elder Whisper. And Elder Whisper is a, is a, is a fox um, spirit. Not spirit, but like a, a fox with intelligence, essentially, yeah. who also has cultivated power and passed down the path that his family follows. The understanding and how to do it. Yeah, and, okay. it, 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 it's because a spirit animal. There's, there's, there's different paths that everyone follows, and the path that they follow is called like the dream fox or something. Like fans of the series are going to be bashing the shit out of me when they hear this, right? <laughs> um, the fox path or something like that, right? <laughs> the fox path or something. So like he goes to talk books. to Elder Whisper in his tower, and Elder Whisper is like thousands of years old. And he's like trying to get advice, and the fox essentially says, okay, Turkey? if, uh, what? Jerky? Uh, it's really good. Yeah, it, the fox says, the fox jerky. Says, jerky. <laughs> no, the no, fox does not say He jerky. says, well, if you don't have a path, why don't you make no. a path of your own? Interesting. So he he comes up and he figures out like some stuff happens. And he figures out how to do a technique, and you know he progresses. Right, he's starting to figure some stuff out. Pearl, no, ma'am, stop your begging. Go, 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 go. He figures out some stuff, and he uh starts going down his path, and he's at this tournament. And, you know, he's fighting kids younger than him, but they're on the same level as him, essentially. So it's, you know, still fair, fair, uh, magical level as him. Yeah. And in the middle of this, he gets all the powers. No. In the middle of this, (laughs) a different, like, clan's great elder appears in the middle of the valley. 
with so much power that the 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 strongest elders in their clan are just being wiped out by him. Wow. Just wiped out by him. And in the middle of this, because the this <laughs> grand elder started out by beheading his mother and tossing her fucking head onto the ground. Wow. And so in the middle of this, he's like, well, I'm not going to be a coward. I'm going to try and do something. And so he tries to use this technique he invented on this elder, and it does nothing. nothing. And he kind of backhandedly wipes him out. Mm. In the middle of this, a heavenly messenger, a, a person so powerful that they have left the world, that they're from a different Plane existence, of existence. Yeah, comes down and admonishes this, this grand elder for doing shit that he's not supposed to, interfering in a world where he left and he's not supposed to be here. And doesn't really pay attention to him as he's dragged off to go get punished. Oh my goodness. And she walks up to Lyndon and 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 proceeds to show him his future. Bestows him with Yeah, but that like shows him like this is the possible future for you. And it shows like if everything's good, like, you know, he's he progresses, like he he gets acknowledgement from his clan, all this good stuff is happening, and then suddenly his valley is just wiped out. It just ends. Like a giant silhouette crashes through his valley and kills everybody. And he's like, what the fuck was that? He's like, well, I mean, you know, you had a good life. And then at the end of it, every your valley is destroyed. And he goes, holy shit, what do I have to do to keep this from happening? And she goes, are you sure you want to go down that path? And she, he goes, yes. And so she goes, she proceeds to show him some of the most powerful people in his world, who would have the power to stop this disaster from happening. Okay. Right? Just extraordinarily powerful people. And then gives him advice, tells him he needs to leave his home, leave his valley, and find this girl because she can help him leave the valley because she knows the way out. Because she's from outside the valley. Yeah. And, you know, sends him on his way. And then this is like how it really starts. Like now he's the now weakest, the story arc comes in. He is the weakest person in the world right now. But he's the only one that can fix it. Yeah. Interesting. <coughs> oh, oh, first book. I got sucked in the first time I read it. That was like what three hours? <laughs> Man, I burned through it, and there was like, I think four books out at that time when I came across this book series. <laughs> And then I'm just wait. It's a twelve book series so far. No, it ends at twelve. It ends at twelve. It is done at twelve. Okay. <clears throat> Might have to touch on that one. Oh, it's so good. It's so good, Stephen. I suggested it to him, and he got sucked in and burned through it. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was the Cradle series by Will Wright. I can't express enough how much you enjoyed it how much i enjoy how much i still enjoy it it's like it's like my comfort series right it's one of those nice recycle bin ones that you jump back to i can always go back to that it was like like i always like you, you know, know what's happening but you still like seeing it again yeah you know because it all happens in my head right yeah so and it's I, a nice little refresher. You're like, I forgot about this piece. Well, and normally when, sometimes when I'm cycling back through, I'll realize things that I didn't realize previous, right? Yeah. Well, we got to take a break, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, it's about break time. Intermission. <laughs> what? They're just going to sit there and watch us eat. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with two adorable dogs. Furry co-hosts. Fucking hovering over our head. Staring at our jerky. Uh, that didn't last long. So, the first thing that I think we all want to talk about is Biden signing in Stating that March 31st 
was what is it? Trans respect day? Acknowledgement it's Rainbow day? Soup holiday. I don't know what exactly it is. It's like LGBT or trans rights day. Or yeah, trans. It's trans something day. Like verbatim, I don't know exactly what it is, but but I heard like the day before. Mm-hmm. Right, and then it's like, oh, you mean Easter? Easter. It just so happens that Easter is the day that you're going to sign this in. Yeah, so we're doing this on Easter, a holiday for religious people, at least two different religions. You're doing this on Easter, and on a Hallmark holiday, since the 1800s, 1700s, when the Germans brought over hiding eggs, Easter. It was a very, it was another festival they had. They had hide eggs for the kids, and it was, it just goes back to culture there. But out of the 300 days in the year, we choose Easter. Easter. I feel publicly attacked on that one. Well, okay, so Good Friday was Cesar Chavez Day. Like, <clears throat> but the thing about the triple. Holy days Mm -hmm. is they always fall on a different weekend. Yeah. And it's typically in April. It's very rare to have Easter in March. Right. No, that's not the problem. The point is, I don't care if you guys want your own day. (laughs) Can you not have it on Easter? Seriously, though, like there's it was not a fucking accident. That the year they decide to sign it in just happens to be Easter. Just happens to be Easter. You could have done it on any other day, and none would have been the wiser. Nobody would have cared. Yeah. Like, seriously. I I've, would have been like, oh, it's it's a thing happening. I no, talked it's... to my gay friends, and they were, all of them are like, we don't agree it should have been on Easter. People in the community are like, it shouldn't have been on this. Christian, non-Christian is like, we don't. We don't want to take away from you guys, but we still want to be recognized. Cool. I have no problem you being recognized. I don't recognized. have a problem with you being recognized. Can you just not do it on... It, it, I, like make again, it in June or something? Again, no. it, this was not... I don't think that this was that community. Correct. I think that this was a political push Yep. from those from the fucking... And it is an election year. Yeah, and it's, and it's election year. And they're trying to pander, and they're trying... And, and it just pisses me off. Right, it, it pisses me off that it happened to be on Resurrection Sunday, happened to be on Easter. It's like you could have chosen different if you would have had it on the day after Easter. Realistically, most people wouldn't have cared. Mm-hmm. I I would have been fine with it. Do I mean, it on there, April there's Fool's always day, going though. to be <laughs> fine. April second. I mean, there's always going to be fucking people who get upset by this shit, right? Mm-hmm. I just don't. I don't like to let this shit live in my fucking head most of the time. For the most part, I don't. And as we talked about, and as me and the, some people in the community talked about, I was like, it just could have been on a different day. Like, we have, I don't know, I think we're at like 34 holidays recognized federally. Federal employees only get, what, 11, 12? Something like that. But there's 34. We're in the dry period right now. Yeah. So, if they're being recognized, 34, holy, not everybody recognizes them. Why couldn't... I don't know. There's still 320 some odd days you could choose from. Yeah, I mean, why? Why this day? Why this fucking day? It's like I do feel very. I feel, I feel attacked. attacked. I feel attacked. As a Christian, as someone that celebrates Easter, I feel very attacked on that one. Just, I didn't even know about it until y'all brought it up. It was annoying. I found but about. I don't watch it. I seriously show. found out about it the day before Easter. I mean, it's when I found out. It was just like, okay, so this is this is the world we're living in. As long as the voters that will potentially vote for me are happy, I don't care. <clears throat> then we're going back to Rome. Yep. But, I mean. But I wanted to talk about something positive. I wanted to touch on something else that you might hate a little bit before we go positive. Okay. Because I don't want to go positive then into hate. Okay. So, Google searches are free right now. They're talking about 
having a paid subscription for Google searches. Well, guess who's not fucking using Google no more, bro? Safari searches I, is free. I, I, I fucking use DuckDuckGo at home. I only use Google at work. I use Bing at work. Heathen. I'm, I'm gross. Heathen. But normally it, it gets to what I need faster. You you talk about a place that is fucking apparently a very toxic workplace for conservative individuals. My workplace? No. Uh, Google. No, Google. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. My brother-in-law works at Google. Do you think Google would go out, go out of business if they did that? No. Because, no. I mean, look at Firefox. Firefox was a pretty darn good browser. And Google basically shut them down. Oh, oh danger. Are, are you going to slice yourself wide open? That, <laughs> that knife is sharp. I'm going to try not to. But it's not even Google. Look at everything Google owns. And if you don't know what Google owns, what does Shaq own? Shaq owns the Beatles. What? He, owned, he owns the rights to the Beatles. How? He bought it. What the fuck? <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Shaq is so much a business mindset individual, and he's taking after these Fortune 500 companies. He's a smart motherfucker. I'll he's, tell you that yeah, much right now. He's very smart. But if you look at the people that do that, because it's, it. it's not just Shaq's that's done this. Other people have done this. Well, there Shaq, was a... Shaq is so much a bro that was just like, just keep talking shit. It's fine. I own the rights to your music. Like, think about that. No. A couple years back, I think it was 2017, 2018, the artist that he now owns, the playwright, the copyrights and all that, <clears throat> they were talking mad smack, and he was just like, enjoy your show here. That's literally all he said. And I think off that one and off all the plays from recorded at the live studio, and I think he made a couple million dollars. Shaq is so much as like, no, talk shit. It's fine. I own you. But he won't, he will never say the I own you piece. He will always play the giant teddy bear. You know what? You want to talk about just someone I got nothing, no beef with and never have? Shaq is, Shaq is the man right there. So Shaq has had so many cars made, custom cars made, by multiple different people. He was on West Coast Customs a couple different times. He was on, but he'll find these mom and pop places, and get stuff made, and then broadcast them across the board. He loves small business because small business is how you have a successful. Middle class economy. Yep. Get it. And he has, I think he has a doctorate or a master's in business. Before Man, he went to the NBA. They fucking hit that gate. Like, yeah. That was Pearl. Probably. She went to turn and her butt kept going straight. <laughs> yeah, I know. That poor girl. That poor girl has got it rough. Like, Shaq had a crazy time in basketball. And he's doing great in business. And but... nobody broke a, a backboard since. I don't know. I don't watch basketball. I couldn't tell you. I haven't watched basketball since the 90s. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but now let's get into the lighter subject, since Google wants to charge for searches. <laughs> premium so, searches. positivity oh, Right? Say that again. positivity One more time. positivity -ness. There you go. We got three pink hoodies three <laughs> times. Oh, yeah. No, we didn't bring it up. We, we've we got pink name pending hoodies. So many episodes ago, we talked about it and finally Sup made it a thing. Supporting breast cancer awareness. I will always support the Tatas. I will always support Tatas. I mean, on the back it or on the sleeve, it could say, I love. I mean, if you're paying for the hoodies, you can get whatever you want. I can't wear it at work anymore, though. It says hey! Oh. What's that? It's got to be socially acceptable. I wouldn't be able to wear it at work anymore if it said that. If it was in bold font. But anyways, positivity -ness. So, this past weekend, I went to Houston to go spend time with my, my <laughs> uncle and grandma. My ass daddy's brother and ass mother. Daddy. Yep. Yeah. Um, and while I was there, 
And my uncle said, hey, we should go out to Ash Daddy's, you know, one of his best friend's house, you know, and family friend, yeah. fa- family friend. Right. Um, And when I was a kid, their kid time out. I'm light. What was the one you just had that you said was really, really good? The Green River. Because we're talking about Ash Daddy and can't toast to Ash Daddy. On the <laughs> so you went to family friend, yeah. Ash Daddy's friend and your friend. And these, yeah, I mean, when I was a child, he was my best friend, right? Um, and then, I mean, you know how time works, right? You lose touch with folks, yeah. stuff like that. And they've had it rough. All right, so hey, there's rough, enough. then there's like all hell broke loose. Like, is it rough, rough? rough I mean, or this all is hell like, broke loose? like, I'm surprised you're still alive. Yeah, this is like life has been proper fucking, right? Yeah. And so they, um, I, I will, I will, I will say, uh, well, I mean, I guess I could say their names. No one's going to know who I'm talking about. Um, as long as you just say their first name. Yeah, just their first names. But, uh, you know, uh, Carol had gotten cancer years ago. Medical and, mama drama. And has been fighting cancer ever since. And is about to go in back into chemo, right? So it is a fucking struggle bus, right? Um, Mike, he got you know, uh, diabetes and he has unfortunately lost a couple parts. Mm. Um, we, we have a coworker who has one hand props to them. They still have a job and they're excelling at their job, but they have one hand and they're in a wheelchair. They have, they're cut off. They have nub legs and a nub arm, but they're still doing life with diabetes. And you know, he's been in and out of the hospital and, you know, he'll get, go to the hospital, get done with the hospital, go to rehab. You know, it's just a vicious cycle. Right. Mm-hmm. And then their son has been working and, and living with them and helping to take care of them and doing all this stuff. Right. And they've had their house flood out. They've had vehicles flood out. By the way, they don't live in a floodplain. Right. There was no reason for their house to flood out, but it flooded. Um, when it rains, it pours. And I mean, they've had AC go out and like all sort. It it's like every time they turned around, the whole family was getting punched in the face, just as hard as you could imagine. <clears throat> every time they start getting ahead, they just get screwed and fucked. And, and it you know, of course, by now, like any savings that the the parents gone. had is long gone because you got medical expenses, you got medical home expenses. house, cars, and so DJ has been holding down the fort like a fucking champ. Yeah, you were telling me about this. And it was like props to him because let's be realistic. Like, seriously, cutting you off, let's be realistic. All hell breaks loose. Cause me and you have talked about high stress job. How long could you work? And I was like, I could maybe work a year. You're like, well, I'm single. I could probably work I could yeah. probably work eighteen months, two years at most. Yeah. And I'd be like, I'm done because it's a resume pattern. It's high stress. Mm-hmm. But losing limbs cancer house flooding none of these are like oh see, they happen overnight no see, this has been happening over a couple of years single income household for three people three grown adults um and i mean dj i met the guy cool it, as a I, cucumber. again it, not just that but like so upbeat like so much more upbeat than i think i would have been Props. right that is that's amazing like and it just blew my mind like i was so fucking impressed like i was so fucking impressed because you know we we were talking about like he was like oh man yeah you know i really wish you know i could fix this on the house or i could do this on the house and i was like bro i mean there's only so much time in the day yeah you know, and he's just go, go, go. What can I do to fix this? You know, and, and he's wanting to get himself physically fit again. But, you know, you you pay more for for healthy food. Yeah. You know. You, oh, yeah. You, Easily. You now you also have to find the time to. It's not even you're paying more for healthy food. You're you're paying what you're paying for healthy food five years ago. 
Yeah. For normal shitty food. Yeah. So now you're paying double the price to find healthy foods. So that way you're not putting processed crap in your body. And I mean, you know, the, the house was clean. You know, so realistically, he's the one cleaning it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm sure they're helping out the best they can, wherever they can, right? But they're but both they're, having tr- trouble. They're limited. They have a finite resource, which yes. is coherency <clears throat> and pain. <clears throat> mm-hmm. When my pain hits this level, I'm done. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's if you're if you're an adult trying to take care of your parents, that adds an entire other level of struggle, right? Yeah. You know, because I know I struggled with it with my dad because my dad got very hard headed yeah. about stuff. We right? we talked a little bit about this off podcast, and, and you know, love him to death. He did the best he could for what he felt like he could do. Yeah, and you even pushed him on that. And the few conversations I had with him, he was like, "I love Mike to death, but I'm not him." Mm-hmm. Like his big thing was he can't just push it down like you could. Yeah, things needed to get done. Well, he had medical stuff in his life, and he had other things in his life that were, in a way, prohibiting him. And some of it was his mind, because he dealt with this crap for so long Mm -hmm. that he didn't want to overdo it because he didn't want to hinder himself further. Right. So there were, there were a lot of things your dad, Ash Daddy, was dealing with that, outside of medical really realistically couldn't have been controlled. Yeah. Were there things he could have controlled? Yes. But they both fall in line together when you get to that point. So the fact that DJ has his parents and he's running through the ringer dealing with all of this. He's fucking running them to the hospital. But with a level head. Think about this. We have at times high stress jobs. At times. Not all the time. Yeah. But at times, high stress jobs. So he is the sole income, and he's rocking it for both parents. Mm-hmm. A kid should never have to see their child, their parent in the grave. Never. A child should never have to see their parent in the grave. Ever. Yeah. Does it happen? Yes. Things yeah. happen. I do and, feel like he is doing his best to stop that. And I'm sure that they're, I, I mean, I'm hoping. That they're getting some disability help and stuff like that, right? I have no idea. I don't should know what be. their finances look like, right? I, I mean, they should be. Really, they, they, they can't they work. Be. They should be at least collecting anywhere from fifteen to two thousand dollars, at least in Texas. If they're in a different state, it could change it. Yeah, but they should at least be at most two thousand dollars, depending on disability. And, and honestly, I mean, even even I mean, Carol was pretty upbeat all things considered, right? And she was on the struggle. And, you know, Mike was, you know, I could tell that he was feeling it, but he was interacting with us. He was laughing with us. You know, he was in a bad way, but he was putting his all into it. But mentally, he's here. Yes. Which is a, both of them. Mentally, they're both here. And the fact they're upbeat, (laughs) it means that both parents either A, just appreciate, or two, actually love that all this is happening. And the fact that they're both appreciative tells me psychologically that they are being taken care of to the best of what's going on. Could could more help come? Yeah. Yeah. But there could always be a more. In mm. everyone's life, there could be a more. Yeah. Like, realistically, $1,000 across all three of us could do more. Mm-hmm. Right. But someone who's going through a struggle bus, being the sole provider for his parents, still having a level head, his parents having a level head, all being content and happy. It's, it's, I mean, I don't necessarily know if they were, you know, his parents were content and happy, right? But the upbeatness that he had just really impressed me to the nth degree. And you can't fake that. Right. You can't fake genuine upbeatness. So if he's doing that, that tells me that both of his parents are both proud of him. Both of his parents are content with the care they're being given. There could always be more, but... Yeah. And my, mind you, I again, I want to reiterate, you, you know, because you've been in sick people's homes before, mm-hmm. right? Where people struggle to keep their home clean and oh, stuff like that, Realistically, right? it's falling apart. Right. 
place they had a cat and a dog. It did not smell like cat or dog. It was a clean home, right? It was very, it just like, I can't say enough. Like, it was just very, it was a very impressive showing. That's good, though. I mean, yes, it sucks everything he's going mm-hmm. through. But absolutely still has a level fucking head about all of this. Like, it's, it's insane to hear these situations going on. Like, biblically, I go to Job and everything Job dealt with. Now, this kid is dealing with the issues of the parents. I mean, we say kid. He's older than me, right? Kid of the parents. Yeah. The kid of the parents. He's old enough. He's, he's over 18. He's an adult. But the kid of the parents is dealing with ailments of the parents mm-hmm. and providing for the parents. Well, in the, in the Bible, Job dealt with losing everything, family and everything. So we take the turn now, and he's helping them. He's doing this. He's doing... So he is bending over backwards the best he can, and he still has a level head on this. Yeah. There is not enough people in the world that all hell breaks loose, and either A, they don't turn to violence, alcohol, drugs. And realistically, that's it. Most people turn to those three, and he's just like, from what it sounds like, I got shit to do. Yeah. The house is decent because I'm sure there could, there could always be more. The house is livable. It's not just decent. It's livable. It's, it doesn't yes. smell. It doesn't reek. It, it has a proper livable stamp on it. Yes. That both of them are living in there with their son who's providing for all of them. Like. And I mean, I, I mean. Just can't say enough, like because you know it, I I walked I walked through the house because he wanted to show me something on his computer. You know we we so psychologically he's proud. He is proud of what he has. He's yes. proud of what he's done. Yes, which he and should he should be. be exactly. Yes, you know I think one of the things he showed me is that there had been some damage done to the kitchen counters or something, right? Well, he didn't have the the money in the skill set to replace the kitchen counters at that time. Since then, he's he's looked up and he's figured out what he and would he's do learned and for the kitchen counters, but he didn't know what to do. So, as a stopgap measure, he had a great plan, and he took the top off, you know, those folding plastic tables, mm-hmm. and slid it, and that's the kitchen counter for right now. And I saw this, and I was like, bro, that's, that's fucking genius. genius. That's fucking ge- That's redneck fucking genius. Ingenuity. That's yes. what that is. That's, that's insane. Like, seriously, you, you look back, and his life, everything he's going through, will live with him till he dies. Mm-hmm. Now, his parents will love and enjoy the rest of their lives for as long as they live. This is... This to me is very much a demonstration of the situation is what you make of it, right? What what this makes me think of is, I call my mom at least once a week, at least once a week. Same. Sometimes it's more than once in a week because either I'm dealing with something or she's dealing with something. But call your parents, folks. Like seriously, call your parents if you have a good if, relationship. If you've got a good relationship with them, don't forget them. Yep. If Continue you, to build that relationship. And if you have a bad relationship, start it with text or start it with snail mail. Like, try to repair what you can. Well, if I you mean, you can't yeah. repair it. Yeah. I, there's relationships there, out there. there Trust are, me. Yeah. Woo. I, I'm aware my wife, her dad, my father in law, not the one my mother in law is married to, but Use your words. my other father in law, definitely one of those. Snail mail is the best way we're going to stay in contact. Yeah. And that, sometimes that's just how it's going to stay. But if you have a good relationship, call your parents. Stay a part of their lives. If there's nothing bad there, don't cut them out. Not even for the situation DJ's going through, but just because it's good to stay current in their in their lives. I mean, you know, it, it's, it is one of those things that I think people... Especially us, us kids, right? Like when you hit nineteen, 
you know, 18, 19 years old, you might kind of stop talking to I'm your parents. I'm not going to talk to my parents ever again. Yeah, no, seriously. Like, I hated my parents, right? Um, I somewhere, didn't. I sent them snail mail and texts every time I came back to the States. <laughs> somewhere somewhere along the way, you're going to realize if if you have good parents, right? Like, Correct, yeah. But you, you will realize that if you lose them without establishing that connection, and going out of your way, because even with Ash Daddy, I had some regrets, but I had gone out of my way to spend time with him and to, you know, see him and to call him every week. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, I didn't have regrets for communicating with him and spending time with him. But uh, I think that's intermission. Yeah, that's intermission. Good talk. We'll, we'll catch you in a minute, and we're, we're going to have another interesting subject. No, but me and my mom, me and my mom, me and my ma, me and my mom. Is the audio on? Yeah, audio should be on. It's recording. Okay. So we talk at least once a week. Oh, I, I, Poppy. Happy. <laughs> hey, I really want to see you do the can't squat with your hand up holding a beer. We'll have to do that off podcast because I don't know what you're talking Instagram thing. We can do that on Instagram. That's fine. We can even post it to mine. I'm indifferent on it. But me and my mom talk at least once Why a week. is it that I turned the cameras on and the light suddenly seemed so much brighter? It's, All I did was turn it's been the cameras bright, but on. But the difference is you're looking that way. Yeah, and it's no, like, no. Mm. You know what I did notice though tonight is that Keeper didn't take a pre pre setup or during setup photo and post it to Instagram. No, I did. Disappointed. I did take photos. They will be on <laughs> YouTube. We're all sitting on his front. Did Did you take pictures of my dogs? They were there. I made sure I included him. In oh, okay. Place. I mean, that's all that Matt. That's all that truly matters. Because I took vertical, you, <clears throat> Kelp, the dog. You dogs. got me too. Yep. And then I <laughs> took it horizontal because you even looked at me, on one of the photos, and I was like, snap, 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 and we're good. Did and then I put my phone down, and you just went. Hmm. <laughs> did so apparently. I I was talking to my dad, and I've had this conversation with him a couple of times. But ball daddy, real ball, estate daddy, the 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 one that I can still have conversations with, non ash um, daddy, non ash daddy, real estate daddy, real estate daddy. I still need to buy him turtle wax. <laughs> Y'all need to go visit Yo, it's them easy. again. Easy, just get him the little. Green I want tub to at once AutoZone. we fix funnest fucking fix renovations. Once renovations are done, I can travel. Cause Goose had his kid. He has Robin, so he's Gotham and Robin. Not actual name. Goose lives in Oklahoma, right? OKC or outside OKC. He doesn't yeah. want to live in Oklahoma, though. I will Is he yet. a Kansas City Chiefs fan? He's not a football fan. He doesn't care about sports so much. He's like, oh, you know, the Sooners did this. Did they? <laughs> it's like, do you even live in fucking. Why do I know this as living in Texas? It's like, I don't even follow fucking college, and you're like, Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's he into? Livestock? Nope. He is so much just caring about investing in his church, investing in his family, and... That's pretty dope. Making sure everything's good. Investing in video games. And video games. Man, which, we, we need to do more goose gaming. Well, he hit... I hit him up earlier this week, and I was like, hey, so gaming, let me know when we're going to play. By the way, I know that... Phasmophobia. I know... Well, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, sidebar. Yes. Screw that. I have a 14 crew lethal company. Lethal company? We can have 30 people on this game. I want to be in. I want to be in so bad. So they hit me up at like Tuesday, 11 o'clock at night. And I was like, Mike's in bed though. I can't play lethal company without him. Let's shoot for Saturday. So Saturday, currently, there's going to be another game. Of at least nine people. So when that happens, I'm going to message you as like, bro, I don't care what the fuck you're doing. Get home. We're playing Lethal Company. I was going to say Barony. But yes, Lethal Company. I have Barony there too. By the way, Steam sent me a Steam Deck from when I pushed 
hate forever ago. And Jess was like, oh, you bought me a Steam Deck? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so me and my wife both have a Steam Deck for the same account. <laughs> you know, that Steam Deck could quietly disappear and reappear in my house. <laughs> it could. A dock's only like 40 bucks and you can play on any TV. And you're I'm, I'm just saying, I was going to buy one anyways. So I would buy it now. So um, I'd buy one of their older ones where um, I'd even buy the 64 because it's cheaper. I think it's like $320. Mm-hmm. And you can upgrade it yourself. $320, buy it, upgrade the hard drive. It worked just as good as the other ones. The only difference is the display changes handheld. Which, if you're not traveling, it doesn't matter. I so, just want to be able to play it on my TV. $320 Steam. And you have the three-year Steam warranty on it. But we were talking about my mom before we get to bleached assholes. Yeah, I was waiting for an opportunity to ask why you know so much about it. I love bleached assholes because that means you care about your booty hole. Do you take a shower every time you take a shit? Yes, actually. I don't believe you. He's got because he's, I know that you should. I know he's that you shit at work. I don't shit at work. I know that you shit at nope, work. I Everyone don't. shits at work. I don't. You I don't sh- have a work. <laughs> Do not shit at work because I know how often they clean the toilets, <laughs> and it disgusts me <laughs> to the point I, I thought it. about. I, I, got it. I thought about going to go shit at work right, I don't. yesterday. Somehow there is piss and poop on the toilet seat, and I was like, mm. "Dude, my toilets what are I know is how they get How they get it? My on the toilets walls. are gorgeous." So we actually had a wall shitter, what? someone who would grab their toilet and write some obscenity on the wall for four years with doo doo. Yes, with <clears throat> doo doo. Surprisingly, NSA picked up this new person. This person left a GS position where I work. And the poop was no longer on the walls, but it was at NSA now. <laughs> That's their problem. <laughs> I I have a I have a second hand pooping hey, story. Is that national secret ass? <laughs> For them, <laughs> yes. For them, a hundred percent. Okay. I have I have a second hand pooping story I'm from my dad. Ass. Oh dear God. Because uh, we from, know we from, have the Navy ghost shitters. From real estate daddy. Uh, he used to work at a family fun center. Ball uh, Daddy. Arcade. Ball Daddy. I hope you're Ball, watching this. Ball Daddy. I hope you watch this. Uh, arcade, bumper boats, go karts, okay. putt putt. Is um, this an Air Force guy? What? Are you talking about Air Force? No. No, he's we're talking never about served. my dad. Oh, okay. real estate daddy. Uh, the one. I thought we were talking about something. In he Air hooked Force me up still. with a realtor that was really, really fucking good. And ah. The issue was, wasn't even her. Loved her to death. The issue was the market. The it was the was market. Where everything's at. But, but anyways, go. So while they were working, while they were there, they had someone that they called the mad shitter. <gasps> I Be- don't like this already. Because they would clog the toilet. All right, this is name pending. We're closing here. <laughs> hey, wait, hold up. What? Where would you find a matter daddy? A what? A matter daddy? Like Mad Hatter daddy? I'm confused. What are you... Is this like a sexual context thing? Or... No. Is this like a swing? I'm no. confused. What... What's the matter Bring us daddy? into your mind. <laughs> oh, what's the matter daddy? I get it. What's up, dog? <laughs> I love that you just called me daddy. <laughs> I was thinking my brain was churning. <laughs> I'm running on fumes now. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was really good. You wanted energy. You got it. That's a short dad joke. It, it's daddy. about time you it's about time you showed up to the podcast, Kel. <laughs> yeah, it's welcome. Only, it's only part three. Yeah. Fucking hour and a half in, and you're finally There's here. Your short. <laughs> as long as you make it, we're good. That so, was good. That was good. 
So the mad shooter. <laughs> the mad shooter. I'm all ears. You used to leave giant blood streaked shit that would clog up the toilets. So his poop was bigger than his booty hole. Hey, that's what, what Marines me. would do on the ship after <laughs> after we just picked him up. <laughs> this has been name pending. This has been name pending. It's been a minute for us. It's yeah. been a, like, we're all healthy. Weeks. We're all good. <laughs> Let's it's been a pleasure go. to be back Throw a with you. Comment y'all. below. I'll respond. There's only one re- comment I haven't because that one comment was good, and I don't have a response for that. So how I, about I thank you for commenting. Anything. And, and more importantly than that, thanks for the feedback. We do appreciate the feed. I appreciate the feedback. I throw it to Mike, and he's like, no, that was good. That was solid. So I need you to fuck that like button. Throw a comment below. and add, Kiss that subscribe. And Kiss the I'll, subscribe. I'll even go as far as, because I watch multiple subscribers, tickle that subscribe. Tickle the subscribe. Because no one else has done it, and we were the first. I <laughs> uh, no. I will Wait, follow that. I up. was the first to say tickle the subscribe. <laughs> I will so, always tickle the subscribe. We love you. Catch him with you next time. Stay yeah. real.